Welcome back to the V Brown Bag Tech Talks here at HPE Discover. Um, my name is Philip Sellers, and uh, this morning I'm going to be talking about Power CLI at 10. Um, I know the time's actually 10:30, but uh, that's not quite what we're talking about. Um, but uh, I am a blogger and uh, IT practitioner for an insurance company based in Charlotte. Um, you can catch me at uh, at PB Sellers on Twitter and also at my website, my blog, techazine.com. So let's dive right in. I'm going to let you in on just a little secret. I love our CLI. Um, I'm an advocate for it any chance that I get because it saves me time, saves me clicks, and I'm ultimately a little lazy as an administrator. Um, it makes complicated things simple. I can actually use it to fix things automatically I can schedule things to run, so talking about the automatic fixes, you know, added on to monitoring systems. So when I see something happen, it can go out and actually take action for me and remediate the problem from a monitoring system. Um, as far as scheduled tasks, I mean, go out and check for snapshots that exist on VMs, other things that need to be cleaned up after 30 days, things like that. And I never have to do it. I write the code once, schedule it, and then it goes off and does the work for me. So I can spend my time doing something that's more important or maybe more interesting to me. Um, so that's a little background on me and why I like this technology. But let's talk about where it's at at version 10. Um, version 10, because it's also 10 years old. So we went from version 6.5 last year. Uh, 6.5.4 came out at the end of 2017, and then around February time this year, um, VMware released version 10 to coincide with its 10th uh, birthday. Um, but they didn't stop there. So we got three releases already this year, and they're steadily building into the technology and what it supports the amount of modules and technologies within the VMware sphere. So 10.0 was released and it came with support for PowerShell Core. I'll talk a little bit about that, but it basically brings PowerShell cross-platform to Linux and Mac OS. Um, version 10.1 was released in April and that brought support for vSphere 6.7 and also NSXT, which is NSX in the cloud. So the first versions of, of that were released as a fling and have been brought in and integrated, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. 10.1.1 uh, brought a whole bunch of horizon view goodness to the language. So um, at this point in time, there are a total of about 20 modules in Power CLI. So that brings me to this. It got a new name. At the time that they released 6.5 near the end of 2016, um, VMware decided to change the name from vSphere Power CLI to VMware P Power CLI. And that was just indicative of the number of technologies outside of core vSphere that they were bringing into the language that you could manage with it. So things like vSAN got added and um, you know, auto deploy scripts and other things like that that were outside of the, the core functions of vSphere. Now, after the name change, they've continued to add more and more technologies. So they announced VMware Cloud in AWS last year, and they brought support for that for Power CLI into the language this year. Um, and then Horizon View was released as part of 10.1.1 that came out earlier this week. So they're not slowing the pace of updates and integration into the language. And one of the things that I really enjoy about it is it doesn't matter if you started with the language back at version 3, back at version 2, back at version 1, all the commandlets that they've brought to us, they've kept them consistent. And you know, PowerShell has a, a really strong concept of uh, typing and objects, and that brings through into PowerCLI too. So you know, when new technology changes like cross vCenter vMotion come out, it's the same move-vm commandlet that we've always used to kick off a vMotion or a storage vMotion. Now you can do the same thing across vCenters. So I talked a little bit about PowerCLI or PowerShell Core. Um, PowerCLI version 10 brought uh, near feature parity to the Windows-based PowerShell and PowerCLI. 
Um, PowerShell Core is an adaptation of PowerShell to run in Linux and Mac OS. So for the first time ever, now you can do all of your Power CLI administration from Mac OS and Linux. Um, there are a few modules that aren't feature parity at this point, but they're promising to continue integrating those in. Um, you've got to have PowerShell or PowerShell Core 6.0. Um, and then they've also made Power CLI uh, a module that you can actually get using the install dash module command direct from PowerShell Gallery. So no more downloading a separate installation, no more updating a separate installation. Now you can just basically go right out to the cloud and install Power CLI in PowerShell or PowerShell Core and pull it down with a simple commandlet. So the commandlet's on the screen and um, you can scope it for every user on your computer or just your current user. Um, different permissions required. You've got to have administrator access to basically do it uh, for the entire group of users on your computer, but you can do it uh, in at least your current user state um, profile uh, without any elevated permissions. And the super thing about this is once you've got it on there, you can update it at any point with any release with another simple update-module commandlet. So no more downloading and upgrading and pushing updates out to uh, systems that you're using to manage it, servers that you're using Power CLI scheduled on. Another important change in version 10 is around trust and certificates. So for years you've seen an ugly yellow warning that says basically your certificates aren't trusted when you try to connect to a vCenter. Um, those warnings never stopped you from actually working, but uh, the first time you connected to uh, a new vCenter you would see it. Now the default action is actually going to stop it from working. So if you don't trust the certificate, you're not really going to be able to connect to the vCenter and do work. Um, the couple ways you can get around that. So uh, the first way is you can use the set power CLI configuration commandlet and you can allow it to ignore invalid certificates. Now that doesn't sound like the most secure way to kind of go about things. So how do you actually go and um, trust those certificates? Well, VMware has made that pretty easy too uh, in 6.5 and, and 6.7. So from your vCenter um, you can basically uh, download a package with the uh, root certificates from your VMware CA and install those as a trusted root certificate. I've got a link here to a blog post, slightly off topic, but it does talk you through the procedure to um, trust those certificates. And I advocate for that way because it solves several other problems. So the blog post will walk you through some of the other problems that you're going to get if you don't trust your VMware CA. So at this point, Power CLI at version 10 is a robust toolkit. And there are so many problems that you can solve. I just, if you take a small amount of time and go out and download it and start to work with it, there's so many things that you can find. The other thing I'll tell you, Google's your friend. There are tremendous community members who put all of their code out, all of their solutions out, free and available to you on the internet. I encourage you to look up um, the VMware Power CLI blog at VMware.com. And then from there, you'll see a lot of community members and links to other folks who um, will be able to help you on your way to kind of get started and get the most out of Power CLI. Thanks for coming out to the Tech Talk, and uh, that's all I've got.